So this user guide will explain the role of the keeper of the passwords in schools and colleges. So the purpose is to give you an idea of the role of the keeper in using the career path report in Zorn, to explain how career path works and how the student information is added to the report in Zorn, but also to explain what information is collected and how it can be viewed in the report in Zorn. So what's happened so far? Your school or college has requested access to the career pilot report in Zorn. A manager at your school or college has signed a data sharing agreement. They've also allocated you as the keeper of the password for your school or college. So what could you do in the role of a keeper? The way the students are registered on the system is through the student area. They go to careerpilot.org.uk and as part of the registration, they will put themselves in a year group. You as the keeper will be looking at the back end of the system called the report in zone. In that zone, you can set up additional groups. Your students will be in year 11 and you can set up tutor groups. You can also issue other staff in your school or college with passwords so they can access the student information. Then they and you will be able to see student reports and also teachers can add comments to a student report as well. So the keeper is responsible for all these things but also looking after the data and for that reason you need to be aware of the data protection requirements and comply with the DSA that's been signed by your school or college. I want to explain how CareerPilot works and how information arrives in the reporting zone. So we have our student area and certain information from the student area is put into the reporting zone if students are registered and if they've done these particular things. So this is the bit you're going to have access to. The keeper will be accessing the reporting zone. We we'll also have the advisor zone and the parent zone. And these are all free access. You don't need a password to use them. So the reporting zone works by gathering information from the career main site. We have two parts to the careers pilot main site. We have information which is free to anybody and an open access part of our site. And then there's career tools where students have to register to use these particular activities. And the career tools are the bits that actually feed into the reporting zone. To register, students have to click here. And then they'll be asked to provide data about themselves, including the postcode, which has to be a real postcode, the school they go to, and the year group they're in. And all that information will be visible from the back end of the system. Students will also be asked to sign terms and conditions to agree the school and college staff can look at their information, and the NCOP, if you're an NCOP school or college, and also us in the Central Career Pilot team. When they've actually registered, they'll be able to use the career tools. They'll be able to indicate the things they're interested in, qualifications, job sectors, providers, bookmark any pages in the site they like. They could do the next steps quiz, which asks about their intentions. They could do one of our skills maps to find out what skills they've got, useful for applying for jobs later. And all this information will populate the reporting zone. So the way it arrives there from the student site to the reporting zone is like this. This is an example. We have 22 job sectors in the site and information on hundreds of job profiles. Whenever there's a cross, it means students can choose. So if, for example, a student likes business ed administration, they could click there and they have the option to add it to their job sector. It'll also ask them whether they're definitely interested or whether they're just exploring this particular job sector. And they can pick up as many as they like. They can also pick up job profiles and look in detail at any of these job descriptions and find out about salary, entry requirements, etc. If they're registered, if they've completed those activities, then the job sectors will be appearing in my job sectors. So you can see they're the ones they've chosen. And any jobs they've looked at will be shown here so they're quickly linked back to those jobs. All of the career tools lead towards a report which a student can view and also download and save and send and print. And you can view that too from the reporting zone. So the reporting zone looks like this. And once you've got your password and you activate it, this is what you'll see for your particular school. 
So I'm just going to show you some of the key things. School, school, school groups is where you manage groups. So you already will have students that are in year groups, which is shown in the reports. But what you can do is subdivide them. So you could create tutor groups, for example. You click on new school group, and it will ask you to name the group. And then you can indicate which groups of students you want to choose from and choose the students you'd like to go in that particular group. So I could become 9SL. Don't forget to save, otherwise it won't be there. And then you'll have a set of subgroups. You can also look at users. And this is where you can see all the users in our school by your group and also by role. So if you created any teachers, this is where they'll appear. You can search for an individual student. If you want to search for a year group, you need to write year 12 in full. Otherwise, you'll pick up any email that's got a 12 in it, for example. But this is really where you create new users, which are members of staff. And you do that by clicking on new users. You cannot add student users. Students are added through the student site. This is where you add staff users. So when you're adding a member of staff, you put in their names, their email address, and then the role, the only one you could choose is teachers, and then you'll send them a password, and that will have to be activated. You might want to act, uh, remind them to look in their junk email just in case it ends up there. Soon you'll be able to allocate staff to see specific groups, like you could just, uh, I could just see 9SL. But at the moment, all staff see all students. So you do want to bear that in mind in terms of managing the data. Just back to the reporting zone dashboard, just to show you a few other things. You can look at reports by school group. And this is where you'll see all the students that have been registered on a site. And then you can see what they've done. So you can look at the tasks they've completed, or you can look at the choices they've made. So these are the choices they've made showing you by job sectors what each student uh, is interested in. And then if we carried on across, you'd see what qualifications they were interested in and what providers. And from this, you can look at the full report. The students can see that too. You can also look by individual student. So this is where you can be sitting with the student. You can pick up their record find out what job sectors, qualifications, and look at their skills in one of the, the skills maps. This is also where you can add teacher comments. So you can build up a record of conversations that are being had with that young person by the careers teacher, a careers advisor, or other people like teachers. When you've got access to the reporting zone, you can also ask access the student zone as a student. So you can have play and do the career tools and get a feel for what the student experience will be. When you've had a look at the student area by going through this route, if you click on uh, where the circle is, you, there's a drop down there and you could choose admin and get back to the admin side. One thing you need to bear in mind is an email address can only be used once in the system. So we suggest that teachers do not use their email address if they want to try out the student area. So they set up a dummy login. So to get into the information zone, which I've indicated as one here, anybody can look at that. That's free access. But to get into the career tools, you have to log in. So we suggest that choose an email address, which is in a real one. So in our example, you would put your name at normail.com. This means this information isn't corrupt in any live data in Career Palace. Choose a year group if you want to see HG skills map, you need to choose the course 16 year group. And don't put yourself in your own school, put yourself in training schools, and then you won't appear in your own school as a student. So that's the advice for telling teachers how to have a little play on the site. Other things that are there to help you, the Career Path Advisor Zone, which you can access from the top bar of the main site, has lesson plans, resources, presentations to put together for students, email templates that can be sent to staff. But you can also apply for some free things like free promotional materials and also free training for, for teachers, which will be delivered by webinar or in some areas face-to-face.
We're also encouraging schools and colleges to become super users. To become a super user, all you need to do is meet four criteria. We've requested Career Pilot material. You have a link on your school or college website to Career Pilot. You have over 100 registrations per academic year. And that you've informed parents about both the main site and also the parent site. If you comply with that and you get super user status, you get a poster. We show you how it maps to the Career Statutory Guidance and Gatsby, and also we'll send you another free statutory portal material. There will be a free reporting zone helpline in place after half term, so that will be uh, November 2017. That helpline will be issuing the number, so there'll be somebody on the end of the phone from 9 till 3 every day, picking up any calls or queries that you might have related to the report. Meantime, you can report any issues or ideas for improvements to the reporting zone to our main address, careerpilot at malm.ac.uk. I hope the user guide has been useful to you and has explained the role of the keeper in schools and colleges.